Hey everyone, I wanted to do a quick follow-up video um, to the one I just posted about some of the capabilities around combined secure registration for MFA and self-service password reset. Because the question came up about federation and how does that impact things like password lists, uh, using conditional access, using Azure AD based password change and password reset. So if we think about that for a second, I can think that ordinarily I have my Active Directory on premises. This is my regular AD. And then of course I've got my cloud based Azure AD instance. I have the AAD Connect component. And that does a number of different things, but you can think about one of the things this does is it kind of has this connector space into AD, then this connector space to Azure AD, which essentially enables the replication of objects. So if I have a user or group here, they're now up there as well. And ideally, as part of that replication, we always want to send the password hash as well. Now it's not the regular password hash in AD, it's a hash of the hash, thousands of SHA integrations, um, a per user sort. I can't reverse it if I manage to get that somehow to actually find my AD hash. In an ideal world, we're authenticating through Azure AD, a cloud-based authentication. It's kind of the, the geoscale option. There's the smallest number of moving parts as part of the authentication flow. But a number of organizations will have some kind of federation. That could be ADFS, it could be a third party. And traditionally, people liked federation because, hey, I have these various cloud services. And rather than making my users have separate credentials in those cloud services, which is bad for the user, I have to remember other passwords, and I won't. So I'll use the same password everywhere which is then bad for the organization, because if one of those clouds is compromised, the credential and the password, or well, if the users have used the same credential, I've now compromised everywhere. And it's bad for the cloud providers because they have to now worry about services to enable account management. And so Federation would solve that because through things like SAML, uh, WSFED, the authentication flow could actually utilize an on-premises identity provider. Now, with Azure AD, because there's synchronization, it's, we send the password hashes, we want the authentication flow to happen in Azure AD. However, some organizations will federate Azure AD, which means the authentication flow is now including the federation service on-premises. So if I think about a typical flow, imagine I'm a user here and I want to authenticate to Azure AD. What will actually happen is I talk to some service, maybe SharePoint Online. It will then redirect me to Azure AD because SharePoint Online is using Azure AD for its authentication, its authorization. AAD will see, hey, I'm part of a federated um, domain. It will then bounce me to the federation server, which will perform the authentication. And at that point, I'll get kind of a token that I can present back to Azure Active Directory. So I'll have some kind of token. Then Azure AD will then actually go ahead and create me my access token and my refresh token. And that access token I can then go and use for the service. So think about the flow. The flow here, as part of the authentication, that federation service was used. So if I had access policies, for example, if this was ADFS, I can have client access policies. They can check various things. They would get called for that initial authentication. And then once I've got that token, AAD would be used for things like conditional access. That's why I have conditions and controls. Conditions could be device health, it could be apps I'm trying to access, it could be users, groups, it could be device state. Um, 
location, countries, corporate location. Then my controls could maybe block access. It might require things like MFA. And that's how we want to do MFA, not just blanket turned on. Hey, based on some policy, and again, a big one of those conditions could be session risk, which is where identity protection can come in and give me a session risk kind of score for that particular session. And I could use, hey, there's heightened risk, uh, let's make them MFA. So control could be MFA. I might also drive MFA through things like privilege identity management. I'm elevating my privileges. So let's make them do a stronger authentication. So I have the conditional access as well. So I have uh, kind of that combination of various conditions and then various controls. And again, a common one of that is MFA. So in that initial flow, they both got called. The client access policies on the federation got called, and then that's the authentication, the author N, and then kind of the authorization that's happening in Azure AD. So both sets of policies got called. Great. But the user now has this access token and refresh token. So if I originally was going to SharePoint Online, and that SharePoint Online, when we think about the services, that's tied to Azure AD. So I can have SharePoint Online, I might have kind of Exchange Online. Now I try to go to Exchange Online. Well, access tokens are super short-lived, maybe an hour. And so the point of the refresh token is I, as the user, and this happens completely transparently to me, things like the Microsoft Authentication Library, they'll automatically go and get a new access token as I need it. So after an hour, Behind the scenes, the refresh token is used to Azure AD to say, hey, give me a new access token so I can continue using SharePoint Online. In fact, SharePoint does its own kind of special stuff. Now I want to get to Exchange Online. Well, I can use the same refresh token to go to Azure AD, ask for an access token for Exchange Online. I don't have to authenticate again. So this does not get called. These kind of access policies are not getting called because I already have my refresh token. Conditional access would get called as part of the authorization. So that's why when I start sort of leveraging Azure Active Directory, I want to focus on those kind of conditional access because even if I use Federation, and again, the big push is to not really use the Federation for Azure AD because it doesn't really buy me anything, especially when you start looking at the way the tokens work. It's not going to get called very often. This is far more powerful. Um, I'm going to focus through this flow. So if I have this federation here, what does that actually mean in terms of some of the capabilities? And when is this conditional access being called? For any application that's federated through Azure AD, the authorization part will hit Azure AD, it will go through conditional access, it can drive MFA. Only that first authentication would hit the client access policies. If I have applications that are still federated to my federation services on premises, this is not part of the flow. The user is trying to connect to this service, it will redirect to the federation box, it will create the tokens and send me back. So the only policies I'm going to be using are these client access policies. Azure AD is not in the equation. Now, as companies start to move away from federation for the Azure AD, and I want to be clear, when I talk about removing federation for Azure AD, it doesn't mean you have to dump your federation server. I could absolutely say, well, for Azure AD, I'm going to remove this federation, so just do cloud auth, but I can still be using federation for other cloud services. Now, a lot of organizations over time will actually start migrating these federations that I'm having to manually worry about certificates and the, the claim contents. I'll actually start migrating them. So it's like, okay, well this one right here, I'm actually gonna move that federation to Azure AD. And then this one here, yep, I'm gonna move this federation. And there's a whole bunch of them built into Azure Active Directory, and I can still go and add my own custom ones. So if I have the requirement for a federation that's not part of Azure AD's kind of built-in set, I can just go and add my own custom. So I can still go and add SAML, WS Fed, whatever I need. Once everything's moved off, then I could kind of retire federation. And federation was a great solution in its time. 
it gave me single sign-on. But now with password hash sync, with password authentication, I can do seamless sign-on. I really get kind of that, that same experience. So hopefully that helps explain where federation comes into the flow for kind of those typical scenarios. And to answer a question, I can still do password reset. I can still change my password in the cloud, even if I am federated. Because if I'm a user and I change my password, it doesn't actually change in Azure AD. There's an additional component that kind of gets bolted on as part of my AED Connect. So when I change my password in the cloud, if that cloud is sourced from AD, that password change gets sent to this little component. It makes the change against Active Directory and then syncs the password up if I've got password sync turned on. I don't even have to do that. So I can still use password reset, self-service password reset, password change, even if I am federated, it doesn't change that. So hopefully that kind of clears up that flow. What about if I go passwordless? What about if I'm leveraging things like, hey, I'm gonna do Hello for Business up here, um, the Azure Authenticator app up here, FIDO2 up here. That does change the authentication flow. Essentially, I'm moving the authentication flow upstream. So while initially the Federation would get called as part of that authentication request, if I go passwordless via Azure AD, this is kind of outside of that flow now. This will not get called, which means the client access policies for that first authentication will not get called either. So just understand that modification when I go passwordless. Because I've moved that upstream for Azure AD, this will not be part of a passwordless flow anymore. Now, if I'm on premises and I'm accessing things federated here, I still have to enter a password. That password list would only apply. And there are things where hybrid solutions with AD, um, where I can do like Hello for Business, that, that can work kind of across on-prem and the cloud. But if I'm integrating a password list up here, it's not gonna apply here, but this will be bypassed for the authentication flow to Azure AD. So this was just super quick. I just wanted to answer the question because a few people had asked about, well, what if I do federation? And so, as I talked about, to summarize, if I'm doing federation, I can still do self-service password reset. Uh, I can still use MFA through conditional access if the application is federated to Azure Active Directory. If the application is federated to the on-prem federation server, obviously my conditional access policies are not gonna get called. I can still do self-service password reset in the cloud because it actually goes via Azure AD Connect and syncs here. And if I go passwordless, well, my authentication moves upstream, this would not get called anymore. Hope that helps. Um, please give me a like if this was useful and subscribe and I'll uh, see you on the next video. Thank you.